Have you heard Jesus is coming back for his bride? And the spirit and the bride say, come. Read Revelation 22:17. And who's the bride? Read Ephesians 5:27. Visit the website now. And the spirit and the bride say, come.org. Mail correspondence to And the spirit and the bride say, come. P.O. Box 210, Stone Mountain, Georgia, 30086. Or send an email to info at And the spirit and the bride say, come.org. Praise God, praise God, praise God. And welcome to our broadcast today. We thank the Lord for this opportunity. And we thank you for tuning in and being with us. I'm your broadcast announcer, Elder David Morris. And our broadcast is, And the Spirit and the Bride Say Come. We thank the Lord for this opportunity that he granted us to come before you with his word. We always like to begin our broadcast with a prayer. Will you bow your head with us? We go before the throne of grace. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity. We don't take it for granted that you've allowed us to come and share your word with your people. We pray that you would bless this broadcast in a special way. Someone may be healed, saved, and delivered through your word. We claim it in Jesus' name. By faith, amen, and thank you, Jesus. Well, we are back again, my friend, announcing that Jesus is on his way back for his bride. Not a girlfriend, not a fiance, and not a social partner, but he's coming back for his bride. He's coming back for his church. Our announcement today is entitled, The Bride of Christ, The Price is Right. The Bride of Christ, The Price is Right. In our modern day society, there is one phrase that turns the economic machinery. It sits atop of every mountain, echoed in every valley, rides on every subway, even travels through outer space. It transcends all race, creed, and color. That phrase is the price is right. You know, if you want to bring a smile on a face, just utter those words. Everyone is looking for the right price. It's not only relevant to our generation. Listen to what Paul said in chapter 6, verse 20 of First. Corinthians. Paul made it plain. Turn to that chapter with me with your Bible. And it reads, For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Let me read that again, if you don't mind. For ye are bought with a prize, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. My friend Paul is letting us know that we are bought with a prize. Now notice one thing about this particular verse. Paul did not say we are bought for a price. Paul said we are bought with a price. There is a difference, my friend, in with and for. Notice, look at your Bible now. Now, most of the time, there's little attention paid to this fact right here because we are so used to saying, for, we take it for granted, but there is a big difference when it comes to our salvation of how the scripture is spoken. We are bought with a price, not for a price. Now listen, if you look up the word with in the dictionary, you will find that it means as a friend. 
as a friend. It means together, togetherness. That's what with means. If you look it up in your dictionary. Now, on the other hand, if you look up for, for means in exchange for something to get equal value for. That's what that means. To return the value of. For must have a return on it. With is a friend together. You see the difference in the two words. And this is how the scripture have quoted this particular verse as we are bought with a Christ. Now, the rule of our society, this is the rule of our society, is to buy a house real cheap, fix it up, and sell it for a big profit. That is the rule of our society, to sell it for a big profit. All right? Now, you will notice that the scripture did not state for, it state with a price. The world's philosophy and the fundamentals of the world, the precepts that it bases its facts on is what have you done for me lately? You've heard that quoted. It's, it's even a hit song that was put out a few years ago. What have you done for me lately? That's how the world looks at it. For me lately. It's always for to the world. Look at 1 Timothy the 6th chapter and the 7th verse. 1 Timothy the 6th chapter and the seventh verse. Turn your Bible to that particular chapter. And listen at what it says. For we bought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The world haven't learned that example yet. Because it's based on for and not with. But my friend, we didn't bring anything in this world. Glory to God. And we're certainly not going to take anything out of it. And you know what? I'm so glad. Hallelujah. That the Bible says Jesus bought me with a price. I'm glad of that. Because you know why? I don't have anything to give Jesus in exchange for my soul. The Bible says, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What do you have to give the Lord to pay him for dying for us? Absolutely nothing. We are saved by grace. That's how we are saved. So I'm glad that the scripture says with instead of for. I'm glad of that. I don't have anything. I would be in trouble if I have to have something to exchange to Jesus for my salvation. I would be in trouble. That right there, my friend, ought to convince us that with is better when it comes to our salvation, then fall. And you know something? I'm so glad that the price was right for Jesus. The price was right for Jesus because the Bible tells us he didn't say a mumbling word. When negotiations were going on, Jesus didn't say one word. He did not complain about the price. Even though he knew what was coming, he didn't complain. You don't believe that? 
Turn to Matthew, the 27th chapter, the 12th, the 13th, and the 14th verse. Oh, yes. We're going to the scripture. Let's go to the scripture. It'll tell us all about this right here. Jesus didn't negotiate, my friend, when he came to the price. It was all right with him because he came with one purpose. And that is to buy back our salvation. He paid the ransom. And he didn't say a moment and worry. Listen to this. And when he was accused of the chief priest and elder, he answered nothing. Answered nothing, my friend. Then said Pilate, and this was the governor, unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? The 14th verse said, And he answered him, Never a word, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. Pilate didn't understand Jesus not complaining about the prize. When the very people that he came to give his life for, oh glory, hallelujah, watch out there, was plotting to take his life, to put him on the cross. He did say a moment word because the price, my friend, was right. Not only back then, but it's right today. The price is right. Never said a mom in word. Not only that, he didn't even stop by heaven's bank on the way down here and make a withdrawal. He paid the price with his own blood. Oh, yes, he did. He paid the price with his own blood. Didn't say a word. Didn't complain. Didn't stop by heaven's bank make a withdrawal, but came on down here and paid the price with his own blood. So what do we have here, my friend? Glory to God. What do we have here? Paul is speaking directly to the church of Corinthians. That's who he's talking to. That's who he's explaining. That Jesus bought with a price. With a price. He was explaining to the church of Corinthians. Those who was espoused to Christ. Turn to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. The 11th chapter and the 2nd verse. Listen to what it says, my friend. Bring your Bible. Bring your Bible. With you to our broadcast so you can look in the word of God or in the word of God we got a hiding place 2 Corinthians 11 and 2 Paul was talking to the church of Corinthians those that was espoused unto Christ listen what it said for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. There it is, my friend. Paul was talking directly. He was speaking directly. He had instructions directly to the bride of Christ. Espouse me, marry my friend. You just heard it. The bride of Christ. The price is right. Oh, yes, it is. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, thank God for the victory. Why am I excited? Because he bought me with a price. Not for a price. He bought me with a price. And that's why I shout and give him praise. I'm bought with a prize. Paul is explaining this to 
the Corinthian church, his bride. Oh yes, Paul is informing them that we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Did you hear me? You ought to be shouting about that. My friend, the Bible is right. And everybody else is wrong. We can stand on the word of God. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's something else in this scripture. St. John 15 and 14. Now you got to turn to this right here. St. John. 15 and 14 and 15. Listen at it. Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command. Uh-oh. There it is. There's an if. We didn't get away. We didn't get away. Let me read that again. St. John the 15th and the 14th verse. Ye are my friends. In other words, you're bought with a price. If, glory, hallelujah, ye do whatsoever I command you. You are my friends. If we do what Jesus have commanded us to do. Uh oh, look out. That took care of the world right there because if is not in the vocabulary of the world when it comes to salvation, my friend. The world does not want to hear anything about if. No strings attached. What have you done for me lately? Move. Move on down the road. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you. Hallelujah. That's what the world wants. What have you done for me lately? It doesn't want to hear you in the ear. And you know what? Sometimes when we look at ourselves, as being the body of Christ, I wonder, do we want to hear anything about if? When we consider the way that we live and do not understand or claim we don't understand what Jesus want us to do. Mm. Ew, glory. Hallelujah. When we know good and well what we should be doing. If you're bought with a prize, my friend. If we do what Jesus have commanded us to do. If we do it. Some of us is just plain spoiled. That's right. We go to church every Sunday. We pay our tithe. We sell our seed off and off. But yet some of us are small. For although we send it off, we're looking for an exchange. We're looking for something. And it's not with. We're looking for something. We're looking for something for the Lord to pay us back for what we're doing. Watch out. It's tight, but it's right. Glory. Hallelujah. Yes, it is. It hits everybody. Starting with the, 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 the ministers all the way to the back door. Everyone is under if. There is no exception to the rule. If we don't do what the Lord say do, the price is not right. No matter how the world 
forms it up and spits it out is not right. The Bible says so. Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. That takes care of that thing right there, my friend. That takes care of that. And what is the scripture telling us that we must do? Go back to 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter and the 20th verse. 1 Corinthians 6 and 20. Go back to that. Listen. Woo, glory. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, this is what we got to do, my friend. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. We have to glorify the Lord. And my friend, that means more than just clapping our hands and stomping our feet. Glorifying God means more than clapping our hands. That's the definition, and that's far as some of us go with it. We're glorifying God. It goes farther than that. We are fooling ourselves if we think we can glorify God without first receiving his son Jesus as our personal savior. We're fooling ourselves. I'm glorifying God. That's what the world say. And never consider one iota of accepting his son as our personal savior. Doesn't even come to mind. Outwardness, showing outwardness, satisfies the flesh, but it doesn't satisfy heaven. We glorify God by receiving his son, Jesus, as our personal savior. That's how we glorify God. By accepting his plan of salvation sent through his son, Jesus. I need me some, some Bible here to back that up. Somebody might be disagreeing. It's all right to disagree with me. But let's see what the words say about it. Go to St. John 13 chapter, 31st and the 32nd verse. St. John. 13, 31, and 32. Uh-huh. Let's see what it says. Got your Bible? Let's read it together. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified and God is glorified in him. God is glorified in him. This is Jesus speaking right here. God is glorified in him. There it is, my friend. There it is. And look at the 32nd verse. If God be glorified, in him. Oh, we got the word. We don't have to listen at the world. I don't need no Mercedes being to glorify God in. I've got Jesus who paid the price for me with his blood. Up, glory. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself and shall straightway glorify him. That's how we glorify God, my friend. Through Jesus Christ, there is no other way. And according to 1 Corinthians 6 and 20, it must be glorified in our body and in our spirit. The inward man. That's the problem with the world. The world 
have a problem with the prize because the world is trying to glorify God with the outward man and it does not work but for so long and it don't work then. It just fools us for a while. The end thereof is death. The scripture said that was once appointed unto man to die. But after this, the judgment, the end is death. We're just fooling ourselves, thinking we can glorify God with the outward man. Jesus made it plain in Matthew 23 and 26 when he talked to the Pharisee. Look at it in your Bible. Matthew 23 and 26. He says, I blind Pharisees cleanse first that which is within the cup and the platter. Clean up the inside first. Glory. Look out. Look out, my friend. That's the problem with the world. My friend, it always leads back to Jesus Christ. If it does not lead back to him, then the price is not right. Only in Jesus Christ, only in Jesus Christ will the price be truly right. Listen to this. There's no need to guess. We don't have to guess whether the price is right or not. The Bible tells us if we're not glorifying God in Jesus, the price is not right. 2 Corinthians, the 13th and the 5th verse, it says, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, whether the price is right. My friend, we can pay now or we can pay later, but we will pay. If we are not bought with a price, glory to God. Bought with a price, the bride of Christ, she's bought with a price. That's what we need to be. For just won't do it. We'll end up in the lake of fire. Because we have nothing to offer Jesus. He said, all of your righteousness is as filthy rags. You don't have nothing. I don't care if you're the richest man in the world, you still don't have nothing to exchange for your soul. We are bought with a price and the price is right. Glory to God. Thank you today for tuning in and being with us on our broadcast, taking the time, follow us, check us out at our website and the spirit and the bride say come.org. You'll find all of our links there on the contact page. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, click on there and pray for us. If you happen to go to YouTube, be sure you subscribe to our channel, if you don't mind. It will be a blessing we're praying, and it'll also be a blessing that we'll be able to continue to bring these videos and these broadcasts to you. Follow us every Sunday, if you can, on our premiere. That premieres at 11 o'clock. Share this video and others on our channel with somebody. My friend, we are fellow laborers in Christ along with you. We are all friends in the ministry of seeking those that the Lord have ordained. Glory to God. 
unto salvation. To be a help to bring them and present them unto our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Glory to God. That's our purpose right there. And remember, keep the faith. The best is yet to come because we are on our way to the new Jerusalem. And we're living in the blessed hope that we will meet you there. Let us go to the new Jerusalem. Oh, the spirit and the bride say come. We will all sing a brand new song. Let us go to the new Jerusalem. Let us go to the new Jerusalem. Oh, the spirit and the bride say come. We will all sing a brand new song. Let us go to the new Jerusalem. Oh, the spirit and the bride say come. Oh, the spirit and the bride say come. Oh, the spirit and the bride say come. Let us go to the new Jerusalem. We will all sing a brand new song. We will all sing a brand new song. Oh, the spirit and the bride say come. Let us go to the new Jerusalem. Are you called to the marriage of the Lamb? Are you called to the marriage of the Lamb? Where we'll all sing a brand new song. Let us go to the new Jerusalem. Oh, come hither, I will show thee the bride. Oh, come hither, I will show you the bride. Cause the spirit and the bride say come. Let us go to the new Jerusalem. It's coming down like a bride at the door. We will shout hallelujah in the morn. And we'll all sing a brand new song. Let us go to the new Jerusalem, and when the trumpet of the Lord 